First divisional game for both of these teams today at Ford Field. Vikings looking for the end of an 11 game divisional losing streak. Of course, today we celebrate the return of the NFL officials. For more on that, here's Laura. Tom, today's referee, Cleve Lakeman, telling me he can sum up how 120 officials feel today with one word relief. Cleats crew showed up to Ford Field today, got a warm ovation inside from fans, players like Calvin Johnson, coaches. Cleats said it has been wonderful to feel so validated with so many eyes open to the job that they do. Two of those eyes belonging to Adrian Peterson, who said, I am so excited they're back. Obviously, the game was not the same without them. Jim Schwartz, however, with the perfect greeting, telling Cleat, I missed you guys, and I will probably be yelling at you in five minutes. But, Tom, my favorite story, one official told me, his wife told him, honey, you're still going to be booed. It'll just be a little more lovingly. Back to you. Oh, uh, indeed. We'll see how it goes today. It's great to have him back. Minnesota has won the toss, elected to receive, so the electrifying Percy Harvin, who's returned four kickoffs in his career for touchdowns, awaits on the kick from Jason Hansen and Harvin five to seven yards deep into his own end zone will bring it out and look out here it goes Harvin he's got one man to beat down to the 40 down to the 20 Percy Harvin a touchdown for Minnesota 5th career kickoff Listen. return for a touchdown they're calling this one 105 Tell you, you open the game with this kind of return you're going to see. He does a nice job right down the middle. He sets it going right down the middle. You can see the interior line right here setting up and then he bounces to the outside. He sees the alley where he wants to go, cuts it back inside and only the way Percy Harvin can turn on the Jets. I can guarantee you no kicker is going to catch Percy Harvin. It was only one week ago Tennessee became the first team in NFL history to score five touchdowns of 60 or more yards in a single game including a kickoff return for a touchdown and you can hear the crowd they are none too happy about the beginning of this one. Well it's, it's a classic return in terms of setting it inside you cannot let a returner like Percy Harvin get outside the edge of your return game. They were victimized as you said twice last week against Tennessee of course one was the Music City miracle number two so you kind of forgive them that but they also had a return that changed the complexion of the game to have back to back games where you're going to have returns like this it is huge what a boost for the visiting Minnesota Vikings right here's an example this throwback that's one of those uh, trick plays last week that happened against Tennessee. Jim Schwartz was a part of that obviously here was a unique touchdown and here you go again this was after they had scored to take control of the game and now you have this unique catch over the top more strange things happened in this game that would last you a lifetime stealing the ball there for an, uh, a touchdown coming back the other way you can see Matthew Stafford pulling up just a little bit there and this doesn't even address the Hail Mary at the end of the game the freeze play at the end. There are more things happen in that Tennessee game. Any one of them you'd said geez that makes this a strange game. It was incredible how many different things happened in that Tennessee Detroit Lion game and then to start the game kind of the same way right now. Jim Schwartz knows this is going to challenge his Detroit Lion team. So just like that we're 12 seconds into it. And the Detroit Lions watch that one sail out of the end zone off the foot of Blair Walsh. So now the Detroit Lions we know this team is very very good on offense with weapons galore for Matthew Stafford as we said it starts with Calvin Johnson the tight end Brandon Pettigrew a real go to guy but Mikel LaShore they know that the Minnesota Vikings are going to be very passive in their defense not let you hit the big play to Johnson and Pettigrew and now that's going to open the door for Mikel LaShore to run the ball not only run the ball but some little check downs out of the backfield. Mentioned Stafford already with four interceptions this season. Three of them came in the first half of the first game. And a free play for Stafford. Why not heave it down to a wide open Calvin Johnson? And then closing speed at the end and another penalty flag. Looked like Chris Cook and Jamarcus Sanford both in coverage on Johnson. So they're going to end up taking the penalty on a pass interference call. It'll put them inside the 25 yard line. 
Well, a smart play by Matthew Stafford. We'll see the calls here. There are two fouls against the defense on the play. Offside, number 93. The penalty's declined. Pass interference, number 33. The ball is placed with a spot and foul. Automatic first down. Matt, Matthew Stafford right here. You're going to see the offsides. He's going to jump here. Right now, Matthew Stafford knows he has a free play. Why not throw the ball down to Calvin Johnson? No matter what, they're going to maintain the ball. Here, Jamarcus Sanford just kind of a little push at the last little bit there. Big Megatron going up for the ball. You got to get your hands on this guy, but not late like that. That is a 56 yard penalty. <laughs> and now Stafford to throw it on first down from the 24. Rolling, rolling. And now he'll just take a seat wrapped up into the arms of Allen along with Jasper Brinkley. Got Matt, Matthew Stafford having no place to go. Here you can see in the slot. Calvin Johnson down the field the safety over the top he's going to be there all day long the two man combination no place to go and like I said we're going to see this soft zone with the safeties over the top I think you can see here on Matthew Stafford a little bit the tight ends not there either Matthew Stafford a little concerned about the injury to the hip and uh, that, that suffered two weeks ago that showed up against Tennessee he might have taken off with the ball had he not been hurt for sure his first carry. And he is wrapped up by Robinson after a gain of maybe a yard. They'll bring up third down and eight. Minnesota defensively playing far better than they did a season ago. They've revamped the secondary, but it all begins with that rush. Yeah, they're going to bring Jared Allen off the outside. Jasper Brinkley's now got to step up and be the call the defense with the injury to Heron Henderson. And of course, Antoine Winfield for a little man, the biggest hitter of any DB in the National Football League. We got field locked up you saw there with Calvin Johnson empty backfield four receivers set. And on third down and eight Stafford looking to the corner of the end zone and it's overthrown no penalty flags Tony Scheffler is tied in a native of Chelsea Michigan inactive to see a week ago with a calf injury. So after the big penalty it's three and out and now a field goal attempt coming for Detroit. Well, that's got to be considered a win for the Minnesota Vikings. Got the early pass interference call. Momentum going this, their way. They can hold on to that momentum, holding this talented offense of the Detroit Lions to only three points. 40 yards out. Hanson so far this year is 10 of 11. Good snap, good hold, and a good kick. Already 10 points on the board. We're not even two minutes into it. To buy Southwest Airlines, find our fares online only at southwest.com. A punch to the mouth by Percy Harvin on the opening kickoff, returning it 105 yards for a touchdown. Fifth time Harvin has returned to kickoff. For a score in his very young career, only beginning his fourth season. And he certainly has to be a nightmare for Danny Crossman, the special teams coordinator, when you know you're getting ready to play Minnesota. Little pooch kick here. And you figure the opposition will start in the 32 yard line rather than giving Harvin a chance. Your thoughts on something like that early, Brian Billick? Well, the fact that it's a Percy Harvin effect, you can't kick him to it again. I don't know that a short kicked it quite that way. I might have tried to take a little bit deeper, but on the 30 yard line, 33 yard line is a lot better than it returning for six. Well, you can see Adrian Peterson's the go to guy. We've already seen Percy Harvin. Kyle Rudolph was huge last week, had five receptions in the big win against the San Francisco 49ers. I imagine we'll see Christian Ponder looking for him early, particularly against that reshuffled secondary in Detroit. Put it in the hands of Adrian Peterson and a big run for Peterson off to the left side. That's a gain of 12. Peterson a week ago carried 25 times 86 yards in the victory over San Francisco. Straight downhill here for Adrian Peterson. They're going to challenge the inside of this Detroit Lion defense. That is supposedly the strength. People will say you cannot run inside against guys like Sue and Sammy Hill. They're without Corey Williams. That could be a factor with this Minnesota Viking team challenging the interior of this Detroit Lion defense. 
the tight end in motion. They'll put it back in the hands of Harvin. And read beautifully on defense by Cliff Averill. We've seen this many times with Harvin. Usually faking the reverse and giving it to Adrian Peterson right here. Adrian, there's the fake. Harvin's going to come over the top. They usually fake this first to see how the end's going to play. Detroit actually did a nice job, excellent job on the backside by Cliff Averill, not letting Harvin get outside. The loss of three brings up second and 13. The first pass for Ponder and a short one. And a pretty good pickup by Peterson. That's one area where they'd like to get Peterson more involved. Two years ago, he thought caught 36 passes out of the Minnesota backfield. Well, and the fact that he looks so healthy. We had him a couple weeks ago, Tom, against Indianapolis. We wondered if it would look like the Adrian Peterson of old. It certainly does. We see the jump cuts. He's doing everything he did before. Obviously, this is going to be the bell cow for the Minnesota Viking offense, along with Christian Ponder and the other receivers now. We've already seen Percy Harvin. We're going to see some of these other guys show up as well. Third and three, and the catch is made. First of the year by Jerome Simpson. Simpson active for the first time all season long here today. Detroit defensively last year really struggled, especially down the stretch. They lean so much on that front four. Yeah, and Dominican Sue inside, Kyle Vandenbosch, but Bill Bentley, the rookie, and Ricardo Silva brought up from the practice squad today. I gotta tell you, and all the time I've done this, I've never seen a practice squad player brought up and start at one of the traditional positions. Terrific defensive play by DeAndre Levy. That's the first catch of the year by John Carlson here, back up tight end. Let's check in with Kurt Menefee back in Los Angeles. Well, Tom, it didn't happen as quickly as your game, but on the opening drive of the contest, Seattle's Marshawn Lynch goes into beast mode quickly against St. Louis. 18-yard score, and the Seahawks are on top, 7-0, just like that. Tom and Brian. Great, thank you. Of course, the Seahawks coming off that stunning win on Monday night. Over the Green Bay Packers. Peterson picks up close to three. It brings up another third down and long for the Vikings. Tom, this is what I'm talking about. Watch Adrian Peterson. Jump cut there, jump cut there. That's classic Adrian Peterson. That shows you that the knee is feeling good. His willingness to jump side to side. Now that's a fancy piece of gear there, obviously. He's trying to protect himself. I think soccer fans would love, uh, would, would envy that with Adrian Peterson. But it's good to see that the knee is so solid and he has so much confidence in it. Blitz coming. Ponder puts it in the air and overthrows the intended target, Michael Jenkins, who is covered beautifully. So Minnesota, after crossing midfield, will punt. That was a much needed stop for Detroit. Everything going Minnesota's way, including the stop for uh, uh, to make Minnesota or uh, Detroit having to attempt a field goal rather than a touchdown. Special teams play. It'd be great for Detroit right now. I can pro promise you, special teams coach Danny Crossman, we just talked about, would like to impact the game on his own and return and set up that offense as repay for the kickoff return for the touchdown by Harvey. Chris Cluey angles it. To the side and Logan. Everybody figured he was going to watch his hand bounce into the end zone. Pretty decent return up to the 18 yard line. So now Matthew Stafford. It is high on the Lions offense goes to work for the second time, trailing 7 to 3. Seven three, Minnesota in front. 9 09 to play here in the opening quarter. And now starting this drive from their own 19. They put it in the hands of LaShore. And he picks up three yards. LaShore. A 100-yard rushing game is NFL debut. And for Percy, he's just trying to catch his breath. I'm surprised he doesn't have that attached to his back as much as they use this guy. Not only returns out of the backfield as a wide receiver. <laughs> Stafford is second down and seven. Good 
protection of the catches made by Brandon Pettigrew coming off a rough week last Sunday in Nashville. Had a fumble that was returned for a touchdown. He had a couple of drops. He had a big penalty. Of course, coming off a banner 2011 season. He and Matthew Stafford came into the league together. Matthew Stafford, the first round pick, Pettigrew, the second round pick. They developed a relationship early. This is a guy that, in a critical situation, he's going to go to. Obviously, balances out the outside presence of Calvin Johnson. Stafford again getting rid of the ball quickly, lays it off on the shore. He escapes one tackle, has another first down up to the 42 yard line. He put a move on Josh Robinson, the rookie out of Central Florida, and went right around him. Mikel Shore not only wants to be an impact in terms of carrying the ball, but here you can see his receiver. He said he was a receiver in high school. He loves to catch the ball, even though this is a big physical back. He has the athleticism to do this in the open field. That's like an extended handoff. You can look at that as a wide sweep running play, something again that Detroit needs to do a lot of with the absence of running game the last couple of years. Oscar. Oscar. First down from their 43. And no sooner did LaShore get the handoff from Stafford. There waiting on him was Jared Allen. Well, the left tackle Bacchus. He just guessed wrong here. You're going to see Jared Allen right here. Bacchus picks an outside shoulder and Jared Allen jumps inside. That wasn't just a guess on his part. They had him covered on the outside. It was a good stunt by the Minnesota Vikings. Great move by Jared Allen. Allen shut out with a sack the first two weeks of the season and had a sack forced a fumble last week against San Francisco. Loose and against Detroit last year he had three sacks in each game six of them total against the Lions. And they get a sack on Stafford here this time it's Latroy Guyon as Stafford has dropped all the way back to the 33 yard line. They'll spot into the 34. You always talk about pressure in the inside, how a quarterback hates that. This is just a simple one on one rush. No stunts, nothing fancy. The right guard, Steven Peterson, just gets beat off the line and pushed back into the quarterback. The thing the quarterback hates the most is that pressure up the middle. Doesn't give you any opportunity but to go to the outside. So now third and 19 they need to get to the Minnesota 47 yard line to move the chain. Caught by Pettigrew and he's about 40 yards short of a first down and out comes the punt team for Jim Schwartz's Detroit Lions. The challenge for the Detroit Lions whether it's third down or first down. They're so heavy reliant on the pass. Teams are playing them so soft in such soft zones. All they're going to let them have is that underneath stuff. And when it's third and long, as long as you don't let them convert, you give them all the yardage they want. Marcus Sherrills, who grew up outside of Minneapolis in Rochester, Minnesota, went to John Marshall High School. Awaits a punt and a fair catch of the nine yard line. Well, he's caught his breath back. Now coming back out there is Percy Harvin. It is sponsored by Chrysler, imported from Detroit. By Domino's, oh yes we did. And by AT&T, the nation's largest 4G network. AT&T, rethink possible. Christian Ponder took over as a starter for the final 10 games of last season. And started out pretty well. But against Detroit, in this very venue, he said his confidence took a major hit. That's blown dead before it ever got started. Movement on the left side, it appeared, for the Vikings. Fairly also moving around early on the other side for the Lions. Neutral zone infraction, defense, number 98. I got penalty. Still first down. Coach, we were talking about Christian Ponder. Four turnovers, three interceptions, suffered a hip pointer, and a blow to his confidence, admittedly. Well, the key was, and you're going to see a pick six right here that goes the other way. In a very tight game, 
But the key was they came back, started Christian Ponder the next week against the Washington Redskins. They did not flinch and make him the starter. He learned from that experience and why he's here today. Adrian Peterson breaks a couple of tackles and on a first and five lunges ahead. We'll see where they spot it. He did get to the 19 yard line for a first down. They continue to challenge the inside of this interior line of the Detroit Lions and that of course plays into the hands of a Christian Ponder. He'd love to run a couple of these then get to those play action fakes where he can look down the field now with a weapon like Jerome Simpson maybe pick up some of those big plays down the field. There's about a half a yard wow. short second and one. Peterson a big hole off to the left side and he's up to the 25 yard line and we're off to Los Angeles to visit with Kurt Benefee. Well the Houston Texans undefeated on the year already off to a good start today against Tennessee. James Casey 11 yard reception from Matt Schaub. They have the lead 7 nothing. Tom and Brian we should mention Jake Locker has gone to the locker room with an injury for the Titans. Not good news for Tennessee. Coach Billick is Houston right now the best team in the NFL. They're clearly the most balanced team and that makes them the best team in the NFL. They roll out. They put it in the hands of Harvin. And he is tripped up at the 31 yard line. That's Ricardo Silva. If you're just joining us Silva due to injuries to Amari Spave and their primary free safety who's not practiced since July Lewis Delmas Silva activated off the practice squad before the game today and inserted into the starting lineup he was on the practice squad for all but the final five games of last year second and three and looking for the big one down the sideline to Simpson contact and a flag Simpson playing in his first game after being suspended the first three after he was arrested on a felony drug charge after Cincinnati let him go this year. Well just the contact that goes after down the field. Defense, you really kind of could have called that all the way. The spot of the foul, automatic first down. What you appreciate is these officials call it confidently and quickly. But there's a bunch of hand pushing going on there. You could have easily called that either way. Yeah, he gets his hand up there first. Simpson pushes back. Then he goes down to push it down off of him. That's one of those who did what first. Simpson originally a second round draft pick by the Bengals. Caught 50 passes from Andy Dalton a year ago. And now on first down. Peterson looking for some running room. And it looked like nothing was there, coach. But that's Adrian Peterson. He finds a way to gobble up four, maybe five yards. Adrian Peterson we've talked about him being a jump cutter and sometimes that leaves you wanting as a play caller because that means there's a whole bunch of second 12s second 13s but this guy always seems to get positive yards for a guy that taps around uh, at the line of scrimmage as much as he does it's a unique combination of both strength yet and athleticism. Ready. What's up? Second down and six. And the catch is made by Michael Jenkins. His 10th catch of the year. Short of first down yardage. He'll spot it right at the 29 yard line. So it brings up third and two and Harvin back on the field. Detroit's got to find some way to put a little pressure on Christian Ponder. They're just coming with a standard four man rush. They haven't blitzed yet, but they're not getting home with these well known wide ends of Cliff Averill and Kyle Vandenbosch at some point someone's got to get home and put some pressure on Ponder. Well they try to set up the screen to Percy Harvin and Chris Houston sniffed that out right from the get go. Great coverage by Houston you can watch on the outside right here. Reacts to the play. He's trying to get picked there by S Simpson. And boy, did they miss an opportunity there. You're going to see that later on. Jerome Simpson faked the block, went vertical. Nobody went with him. That helped break up the screen. But we're going to see that play again with a shot down the field. So now the rookie, Blair Walsh, from 49 yards out. And it caught a piece of the upright and sneaks through. What a story Walsh has been. He's 8 of 8 on the year. 
The lead is seven. Chris Houston, at only 27 years old, he's a veteran, Coach Billick, of that very young Detroit Lions secondary, a secondary that was scorched and lit up repeatedly at the end of last year. Well, so far they've held up pretty good because with all the weapons, and we can see a bunch of them just sitting there on the sidelines of the Minnesota Vikings, they have the talent to challenge this revamped secondary of Atlanta. We may yet still see that. Logan will take a knee. Only one time that they had an eye early on for Calvin Johnson. I'm sure that's about to change. 10 3 game, Minnesota in front. They brought in an extra big body. Riley Reef, boy, they like his future very much. As to perhaps one day take the place of longtime left tackle Jeff Backus, who's in his 12th year. And they're going to throw it on first down and find the short. And he's wrapped up at the 25 yard line. A gain of five. And we'd love to welcome the men and women in uniform serving around the world watching today's game. In 175 countries and abroad, ships at sea on AFM, the American Forces Network. We cannot thank you for standing tall and strong for the greatest country in the world. God bless you all. We're staying with this big package, and the first thing you do out of it, of course, is pass. Play fake to the shore. And Stafford rolling around and just has to swing it out of bounds. Detroit offense looks a little bit out of whack early on here today. We're talking about an offense that, you know, yeah, the yards are there, but you, you talk to the people that really watch Minnesota or for Detroit rather play a lot. Ryan, they have kicked eight field goals in the last two games. They're used to touchdowns ever since Matthew Stafford's been healthy at quarterback. Their frustration is that everybody is playing them very passive. The first game against St. Louis last week against Tennessee. 92 snaps. 90 of them were in cover two or a loose zone. People are just not letting them get the big play seeing if they can go the distance. Third down and six. First down catch is made by Calvin Johnson. We'll see if that's a final play of this opening quarter. You can see there's always going to be a guy over the top. That's what I'm talking about, about a passive zone over the top of a Calvin Johnson. So you have to be comfortable with these short underneath chunk chains, I call them throws, by the quarterback. Take the run, take the underneath throws, because teams are going to make it very difficult to make big, big plays down the field. Well, Minnesota has to feel very good about the first 15 minutes of this one. The 10-3 lead. Fox NFL Sunday continues in a moment. Where are you at? Huh? Set to begin the second quarter here at Ford Field in Detroit, Michigan. The Minnesota Vikings are trying to end an 11-game divisional losing streak. On first down. Drag down. For a six yard loss is LaShore and the first man there, Everson Griffin. This right side right here of the defensive line sets that edge. You can see right here, Marvin, uh, Marvin Mitchell comes out, forces the play to come back inside, and then the rescue squad shows up. Anytime you can turn an outside run back inside, that's a good thing for the defense. Well, they'll call it a loss of five, so second down and 15. Just beyond their own 25 yard line. And Nate Burleson, first time we called his name today. Up to the 33, so to bring up a third down and eight for the Lions, trailing 10 3, opening minute of quarter number two. And we're seeing once again Matthew Stafford, the patience that he has to show against teams that just want to be so passive in the secondary take the underneath stuff whether it be the run whether it's a drop off to the tight end the back or even a wide throw like that to Bertelson you're going to take these four and five and six yard chunks where loose First down yardage. What a nice open field tackle on Johnson by Jasper Brinkley. His first year as a starter.
missed all of last year following hip surgery. Brilliant play by Brinkley. You can see here closing in on the very big Calvin Johnson. Classic tech book, textbook tackle, giving him no additional yardage. All he need was another foot or two. Brilliant play by Brinkley. So Nick Harris brought back after spending seven years as a Lions player. And that one will bounce out of bounds inside the 10. So welcome back, Nick Harris. 51 yard punt. Standard of the world by KFC. Come in today and taste why fresh is better. And by Visa. Make your season epic with Visa NFL fan offers. Big time play by Jasper Brinkley denying Calvin Johnson a first down and forcing the punt. But now Minnesota begins its drive from its own nine yard line. Ball start. Offense. We'll set with one. Half the distance to the goal line. Still first down. That is the first false start penalty this year against Minnesota. Let's check in downstairs with Laura Oakman. Tom, Nate Burleson told me after last week's loss, he asked the team, are you angry yet? He said, we play better angry than through us to a playoff season. We have not found it. We have to find that edge that we played with last year. We wore out the whole disrespected thing. They have not found that edge yet. Well, Adrian Peterson finds an edge against his Detroit defense. He has given them plenty of breathing room and a first down up to the 23-yard line, a gain of 19. Watch the lead fullback Jerome Felton there. Nice job plowing a hole, setting it up inside here. Uh, and maybe they're not angry, but their defensive coordinator, Gunther Cunningham, is going to be plenty angry with this kind of missed tackling. They're not being physical the way we saw a couple weeks ago. And this Minnesota Viking team against the 49ers showed they can be physical. Play action this time, and Ponder takes the handoff to Peterson and throws in the football. That'll be a gain of close to four on first down. Peterson, a big start today. Six carries, 49 yards. You know, Tom, you, to build on what Laura was talking about, we, we all know how undisciplined, supposedly, this Detroit Lion team was, showing their passion sometimes too much so. Sometimes when you reel that in, there's a price to be paid. Now, whether that's the reason for lack of physicality, that's not for me or anybody else to say, but right now, I agree. We're not seeing passion or physicality by this Detroit Lions defense. Lunging across the 30 up to the 31 is Peterson. Third down and two upcoming. Let's check in once more with Kurt Menefee. Well, the Atlanta Falcons were the only team in the entire league that hadn't trailed all season. That is until today when they were down 7 nothing to Carolina. He raced right away. Matt Ryan, 49 yards to Roddy White. Game all even at 7. Falcons marching again. Tom and Bryant. Toby Gerhardt is checked into the backfield. And he said he'd like to get the ball into his hands early after fumbling three times in the game last week. Instead, it's wide open down the middle to Percy Harvin and a first down to the 49. The composure of Christian Ponder is showing here. You can see here he's going to get a good solid pocket. He's looking down the field. Two levels. The route right in behind the linebacker. Percy Harvin getting in behind that linebacker level. The linebacker stepping up to account for Toby Gerhardt, who is just underneath. He too would have had the first down. Nice poise by Christian Ponder. And a very rock solid start so far for Ponder. And a place where he said his confidence took a major hit a season ago. So they do indeed give it to Gerhardt for the first time. He crosses midfield and he's to the 48. Well, Toby Gerhardt. Toby Gerhardt is such a physical player. And you can tell this is not his game. Right here, the ball starts to come out. In four, uh, in, in three turnovers, or I should say two turnovers, but the fumbling of the ball not covering it, they made a big point for Gerhardt this week. You don't want to focus on him too much, but you can't ignore the elephant in the room. You cannot put the ball on the ground. He knows that. That's why they wanted to give the ball to him early. They fake it to him this time. Ponder rolling, walks it down the sideline, and incomplete an eye on Michael Jenkins. Good coverage here by Houston. 
You know, it was so out of character for Gerhardt to cough it up three times against the 49ers. Two of them he lost. You're talking about a guy who had 250 career touches and only fumbled four times. Well, on a big physical back like Gerhardt, he prides himself on that. He wants that kind of physicality, and he knows turnovers are going to be the things that limit his touches. This team needs that consistency when they go to that physical style of running that he represents. Seventh play of the drive. And they lofted it down the sideline, and the flag comes in. That's Bentley on the coverage. And again, an eye on Simpson. And three times already, Coach, they have tried to stretch the field on balls to Simpson, and they've gotten flags twice. Defense for the 28. Ball replaced to the spot and foul. Automatic first down. Well, the size of a guy like Simpson down here, you count on this, two things can happen, and, and both of them can be bad if it's a reception or a penalty. The incompletion, the only thing the defense is going for, kind of incidental contact, but it's going to get called. He did not play the ball at all. He put his hands on the bigger Simpson. He's not only athletic, he's fast. He can have the jump ball and go up and get it. We're going to see some more of this until these DBs show they can cover him down the field. Harvin's in the backfield right now. And he'll hand it off to him, and Harvin with good running room. And he's all the way down to the 10. Coach Billick, I said it to you last year, and I'll say it again now. For my money, if I had one player in the NFL to pick to have on my team on offense, I'm not sure there's anybody I'd take ahead of Harvin. Well, there's the uniqueness right there of Percy Harvin. You can see this is nothing more than a straight downhill play. You typically don't run this type of play when you put a receiver in the backfield. You might try to flip it outside. You might even run a trap. He's a legitimate tailback in that situation, unique to his abilities. In the backfield once more. Harvin rolling, rolling, will throw it dangerously so. Silva there, blanket coverage. And I want to clarify, when I say the number one pick, I'd take Harvin. Just to make sure now. That's I'm after a quarterback. After a quarterback. <laughs> I'm with you. But he would be the guy. I mean, they talk about the big receivers and not taking anything away from Andre Johnson, Calvin Johnson, any of them. This guy is a weapon on multiple fronts. Yeah, nobody represents the assets across the board that a Percy Hat Harvin does for an offense. Running back, slot back, legitimate wide receiver. And now he is in the shotgun. We haven't seen this look from Harvin. And you can't play it much better than Justin Durant just did. Durant their leading tackler. And it brings up a third down and goal. Now are you getting a little bit cute here inside the tent? Well, you're right here. Nice job. They recognize there's only a couple of things they're going to do now. Christian Ponder certainly not going to lead up there as a running back. Nice job pulling the trigger to Justin Durant. Recognizing that you got to get a pad on a pad on Percy Harvin real early. You don't want it in that second level. And Ponder is wrapped up and dropped by Vandenbosch on third and goal. So that's a big defensive stop following the long penalty. Nice job starting upfield, just like every pass rush end wants to get, and then transitioning under underneath, getting rid of Khalil, and closing in on the very fast. Christian Ponder. So now on for a 27 yard field goal try as Blair Walsh, a rookie out of Georgia, has not missed yet and still hasn't missed. You have to be impressed with this Minnesota Viking team out to a 10 point lead. Bosch denying Minnesota a touchdown, but it's a 13 3 lead for the Vikings here nearly midway through the second quarter. And on offense, for the Detroit Lions, they need some kind of spark right now. Yeah, they do, they're not getting an emotional spark defensively, so they've got to generate it offensively, but they still got to be patient. Minnesota's not going to give them the big play down the field. They're going to make them do it in an 8, 9, 10 play drive. Matthew Stafford has to orchestrate just that kind of drive to get the energy back in this building and back on this team. Logan awaiting a kick by Walsh, and once more he'll take a knee. So we will take a break. What a spectacular venue this is, Ford Field in downtown Detroit, Michigan. 
Of course, this silly city celebrated a trip to the playoffs a year ago. And the Lions went 10 and 6. Lost in the opening round, routed in New Orleans. And they started this year at 1 and 2. Able to break a couple of tackles is the shore and makes it positive yardage. Diving up to the 24-yard line. Those were tough yards there. We talked about Adrian Peterson getting positive yards. Michael Ashore the same way. You love that as a play caller. May not get as many big plays, but you keep out of those second and longs. You do enough three and four yard chunks, all of a sudden you're in a real convertible third down. Same thing. Early movement it looked like by the offensive Ball line. Ball start. Offense number 51. Five yard penalty. Still first down. That's Dominic Viola. And you'll hear it from the crowd. Actually, they remember down. last week. Well, he gotten all the way down to the seven yard line on a fourth and one in overtime. There's a hitch by Riola. Everybody thought they were going to try and draw Tennessee offside. Instead, Riola snapped the ball. Yeah, and for a 12-year vet, you just don't expect that. You know, Jim Schwartz, of all the things that could go wrong, you don't expect your 12-year vet center to be the one missing link on a play that ultimately can cost you a game. The second and six becomes second down and 11. And they're denied the first down yardage on a catch by Keelan Williams out of the backfield. So again, very little, if anything, by this Detroit Lions offense. Really, their biggest play by far was a 56-yard penalty, which put them in the field goal range for their only three points of the game. And we talked about it. If you're going to go eight, nine, ten plays on these small yardage plays, handoffs, drop-offs underneath, a penalty, a simple penalty like that kills you because now all of a sudden you're now in a third and five, a third and six, Work. where you otherwise would have been a third and one. We'll see if they can move the chains. We're under seven minutes to play until halftime. And they're coming after Stafford, who gets it away. They will move the chains on a completion of Pettigrew. But perhaps that will be the spark Detroit's looking for. And when you have big tight ends like that, we talked about the relationship between Stafford and Pettigrew. Started the minute they both showed up. Nice soft hands for a big man. Your tight ends are your best friends in these short third and mediums because you usually have a size mismatch, whether it's a DB or a linebacker. 52. Good. Ashore on the first down carry, met at the line of scrimmage again by Jared Allen. That'll be a loss of a yard, maybe two. Chad Greenway again does a heck of a job. Filling in right here, filling in and just creating that proverbial picket fence. No place for the running back to go. Get him to start to dance, particularly a big back like LaShore. Get him going side to side. That does not bode well for the Detroit Lions when you have a big back like LaShore going side to side. A loss of one on the play, second down and 11 in Stanford. Caught by Johnson, and they're saying he was down right at midfield. That's the first down. That was almost a sidearm-like delivery by Stafford. Yeah, you're going to see the route coming. Just a simple in route, bending inside. It's amazing, even with what you can see as the soft coverage. And now this sidearm. The only way I got to get it there, I'm going to sling it. Almost gets tipped finding Calvin Johnson it is amazing to see how consistently they can still get the ball to Calvin Johnson clearly he was down even though they know that's where he's going third catch of a day by Johnson and now Stafford flushed out of the pocket throws Titus Young the first down to the 32 yard line and now known as Titus Young senior after the birth of his son he uh, was was on the receiving end of that 46 yard Hail Mary last week in Tennessee. And this is one of the things that can break down those passive zones we talk about. Make the DBs start to separate Titus Young finding a hole in that secondary because of the time that Matthew Stafford bought in getting outside. First down, they hand it to the short. And he's bottled up after a gain of close to three. 
Dominic Raiola is hurting out there. Yeah, he glimped back on the last play. Obviously, Raiola in the inside, particularly if he's a little gimpy on the inside, you don't get quite the push that you'd like. He's one on one on the inside on Evans. Doesn't quite get the push, and now you can see he just can't push around on it. They got to think twice about leaving Dominic Raiola in. 3.30 to play until halftime. They put it in the hands of Nate Burleson. And very close to a first down. Needed to get to the 23-yard line. It looked like he got there. And he did. First down Lions. Closing it on three minutes to play until halftime. And Minnesota with a 10-point lead. Minnesota just like Detroit did you get so focused on the inside one of these reverses by the receivers We saw Percy Harvin do it for Minnesota now Detroit has responded the same way We got to continue to watch Dominic Raul in the middle to see how he's going to hold up <laughs> Play fake to LaShore down the middle of the field and nearly intercepted it almost appeared as though Sanford Was so concerned about hitting the receiver that he didn't have his eye on the football well, great timing. That's all it's got to be. You're going to see the receiver down the field, gets in behind the linebacker level after the play fake. Kind of a jump ball. You're right. He was thinking about the hit, then realized, wait a minute, I might be able to catch this. Of course, if he could catch the ball, he wouldn't be a DB. He'd be a wide receiver. That's why he's on the back end. Nice play by Sanford. All right, second down at 10. 10th play in his drive coming up. Burleson and he has stood up and then slammed to the deck by Josh Robinson and the flag comes in. Well, one thing we keep talking about the officials, they sort it out very quickly. We're going to see here, you're going to see Calvin Johnson's cleared out. Burleson comes inside nice tackle and just that extra little boy. I don't know. I don't know. I, 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 I don't know how you can call that. Officials need to decide quickly. The biggest thing about the replacement officials you didn't like it took so long to come up with the call. Sometimes it takes a while to sort this stuff out. Personal foul unnecessary roughness defense. Number 26. Wow. Unnecessary slam to the ground. The penalty be half the distance to the goal line. First down. Oh, that's a big call. Yeah, when it's a continuous act like that, watch it again. Kind of a just it's that last little bit of the WWF slam, I guess, but when it's a continuous action like that, boy, that's a tough call. So the ball will be spotted inside the 10, just outside the eight-yard line. First and goal for the Lions. Under two and a half to play until halftime. We are. Always watching Calvin Johnson. Where is Calvin Johnson? Down goes Stafford. Back at the 14-yard line. And Jared Allen picking up his second sack in as many weeks. We always talk about it's the right down here, Calvin Johnson always. The guy you're going to look for got the matchup on Josh Robinson. You like the size matchup. It's the job of the defensive lineman to always make the quarterback pause. That's exactly what the Minnesota Vikings and Jaron Allen did that last play. Down and goal for the Lions. After the sack of Stafford, well spotted back in their own at the Minnesota 13. Calvin Johnson the slot usually means something inside. He pulled, and there he is for the touchdown. No, they say it came loose. Johnson had it, took a big hit. Combining on that blow, Harrison Smith, the rookie out of Notre Dame, and Jamarcus Sanford. Nice timing by Sanford here deep. Like we said, there's always going to be someone over the top of Calvin Johnson. Actually, nice job by the rookie. Harrison Smith coming in on the offside. He's the one that delivers the blow. 
We talked with Antoine Winfield. He says you can't jump up with Calvin Johnson. So you got to wait as he comes down to try to dislodge the ball. And that's exactly what the rookie Smith did. So third and goal upcoming. Lions are going to call a timeout. And we're going to take a timeout and check in with Kurt Menefee on the Visa Halftime Report. Coming up on the Visa Halftime, we'll have highlights from a busy day in the NFL, including the undefeated Texans having no problem against the Titans. The Chiefs being brought back to reality by the Chargers, and the Patriots trying to get back to 500. It's all on the Visa Halftime. So, boys, come on. Get back to work. Take a look at that. Big brother. Well, that group needs a big brother. They need someone watching over them on a regular basis. Okay, now third down and goal here, Coach Billick. You're the play caller. What are you doing? You're naturally thinking Calvin Johnson, but that's exactly what the Minnesota Vikings are thinking. That's where a Brandon Pettigrew can show up as well. Pettigrew's right here on the inside. Hey! Calvin Johnson all the way up at the top. Simply dropped it. Beautiful throw by Stafford. Nothing to take his attention away, whether he saw the last hit by Smith on Calvin Johnson, whether that was in the back of his mind, but that's the kind of thing that that lingers with you. You move on, you don't want to think about it, but that kind of thing lingers with you. 31 yard field goal try by Hansen. Still a minute 50 left on the clock, and the Vikings have all three timeouts remaining. And this one is good. So once more, that's been the theme of this Lions offense, settling for field goals, two of them today. Breaking the ball out, hard to blame Calvin Johnson for that. The Brandon Pettigrew dropping the ball, a short touchdown to bring the Detroit Lions back into this with the Minnesota Vikings. When your two best players don't deliver like that, it shakes up the team. That's 11 drop passes now by the Lions. That's most in the NFL. Scott Linehan, the former head coach in St. Louis, offensive coordinator now in Detroit, trying to keep the spirits up of Stafford. And again, we're going to keep it out of the hands of Percy Harvin. And, and really right there, a little bit deeper, so you start them at their 21. And that's what you wanted. That's what they wanted the first time, ended up on the 33. Need to keep it deep like that. Well, the regular season is coming to an end this week. And then the National League's best teams will look to their brightest stars to lead them to the National League Championship Series, moving closer to the World Series. Legends are born in October. Our coverage of the NLCS begins Sunday, October 14th. Game one of the National League Championship Series, only on Fox. Well, that's a dangerous throw. Right into the face of Cliff Averill. But you have a minute 43 left. Minnesota all three timeouts remaining. That's quarterback's worst nightmare there. The veteran Averill knew something was up with a short aligned Percy Harvin almost got himself a pick six. And second down, Ponder out of the shotgun. And that's caught for a first down up to the 32 yard line. And that's the first catch for Jerome Simpson. He has not played in a game since a preseason game back in August. That was a tip ball then right into the hands of Simpson. So they're in the hurry up. And sacked his ponder all the way back at the 22 yard line. A convoy. Aver and Dominican Sue both there. And Ponder trying to get everybody to the line of scrimmage, but he's waiting on receivers to come all the way back from the other end of the field. Two big plays by Cliff Averill first knocking down the quick little bubble screen to Harvin and then getting that pressure of course along with the entire defensive line on Ponder now in a two minute situation now the Minnesota Vikings you change your mentality a little bit about how much of this clock can I draw down because I'm a long way from getting into scoring position. So they did huddle up. throws the intended receiver Michael Jenkins incomplete. 
So now third down. That's what I was talking about the transition to your priority in a two minute. Okay, I want to go the length of the field and score. I want to get in field goal position. But the main priority after those is don't kick the ball back to the opponent because of these plays now, unless they can convert here, Detroit might have a chance to at the very least return a punt. Screened Adrian Peterson. And he is tackled from behind to the 25 yard line by Stephen Tullock. So with 29 seconds left, the Vikings will punt. And they're leaning on a big punt here from Cluey. Lions calling a timeout. Mentioned a moment ago on the Visa halftime, Kurt, Terry, Howie, Michael, and Jimmy will talk about the Texans unbeaten start. Patriots trying to get their second win, trailing in Buffalo today. And Kansas City getting beat up at home so far today by San Diego, a team that could only score three points against the also unbeaten Atlanta Falcons last week. Yeah, getting beat at home in the division like that, that's a tough one for Kansas City. If it, that holds, they're going to have a lot of explaining to do. Louie puts a foot on it. And that'll back up Logan. Here's 22. Great coverage by Minnesota. Fifty two yard punt. And a loss of a yard on the return by Logan. 16 seconds doesn't leave you a lot of time for Matthew Stafford. You're looking for that one play maybe to get you that chunky yardage down the field just to give you a position for the Hail Mary which of course we saw them do last year. It was uh, uh, Sean Hill was the one that executed it but right now you're just trying to get yourself in a position to get that Hail Mary shot. Where you at? Well, they're not even going to bother with it. They're going to hand it off to the shore. And that'll be the final play of the first half. The Minnesota Vikings have lost 11 consecutive NFC North games. The last time they won inside their division was September of 2010. Ironically enough, it was right here in Detroit when Adrian Peterson rushed for 160 yards and a couple of touchdowns. But right from the get go Percy Harvin setting the tone for this one opening kickoff return at 105 yards for a touchdown Minnesota on the road's got to feel very good. They are in that manageable game that they want Christian Ponder to do for them for Detroit. They've got to find some energy here. They've got to find something to spark this crowd spark their team. They're paying playing passionless football right now. Good half for Peterson seven carries 53 yards. Ponder solid hitting on 10 of 15. And it's 13 to 6. We're at halftime and right now let's go to Kurt Menefee in Los Angeles for the Visa halftime which begins right now. See Harvin setting the tone early on for the Vikings. The opening kickoff returned 105 yards for a touchdown. The Lions will receive a kickoff to begin the second half. Follow your favorite team all season long. Go to iTunes.com slash NFL. And you know, Laura Oakman talked about the Lions playing with an edge, with a fire about them. They're staring down the barrel, Coach Billick, and let's say get this thing turned around at a one and three start. And that's paramount in Coach Jim Schwartz's mind right now. But you're right, they've got to get energy on this offense. They're going to have the first opportunity. They're only down by seven. These are tight margins that the Minnesota Vikings game plan works around. And Detroit is just a single score down. So out to the 20 it will be, and we'll check in along the sideline with Laura. Tom, Jim Schwartz told me it's not just.
just about the edge for the second half. It's about the execution. We need to catch the ball. We need to play. Leslie Frazier was talking about he liked the way they're moving the ball, but we need to punch it in, not settle for field goals. Percy Harvin, we've seen him as quarterback, running back, wide receiver, returner. That's going to continue in the second half. Leslie Frazier added, I hope Coach Billick has been talking about what a special player he is. I assured him, Tom, you both have. Well, that we have, and uh, and he's earned that right because we have seen Percy Harvin a great deal over the last three years since he came out of the University of Florida. And I don't know what there is not to like. First down catch made by Tony Shefflin. And he's up to the 35-yard line. So, Coach Billick, let's go into the uh, halftime locker room. If you're uh, Jim Schwartz or Scott Linehan on offense, what are you talking about? Well, he's talking about, guys, we're only down by seven, and, and look how many balls we've dropped. Look how many opportunities. The kickoff return. Mm -hmm. Not that they've lucked into it in Minnesota, but Jim Schwartz is saying we can control this thing, but we got to execute the way we know how. For Minnesota, guys, just keep doing what you're doing. Obviously, can't turn the ball over, and we're going to be presented another opportunity to separate the score. Very quiet first half by Michael LaShore. He's wrapped up by Chad Greenway on a first down carry. We look inside some of the numbers. Now, Minnesota necessarily didn't do a whole lot on offense. Of course, they did not turn the ball over. Uh, right there, you know, we talked about Michael LaShore adding a running element to this Troy Lion offense that's been missing. Well, it's still missing with only 15 yards rushing. And this is what Minnesota's going to capitulate to Detroit. We're not going to give you the big play. We're going to let you run. They're stuffing the run with just a four-man line. It's not like they're stacking the box to stop the run. Stafford looking for the big one. Blanket coverage out there. They've been trying to work on the rookie Josh Robinson, and so far he's had a pretty good day. He has, and they're getting help over the top. These safeties are playing wide and deep. They can take a great deal of comfort in that, not just Calvin Johnson, but whether it be a, a Nate Burleson or a Titus Young with shots down the field. I'm afraid Detroit's going to have to be patient and work the ball down the field with the running game, hitting the tight ends like we saw earlier with Scheffler, hitting the backs out of the backfield. Because that's all the uh, Minnesota Vikings are going to give them right now. Come on, Dom. Lions two of six on third down so far today. This is third and ten. Roll Stafford out. And Johnson down at the 20. And broken up, nearly intercepted by Harrison Smith. Smith, the first defensive back taken by Minnesota in the first round, going all the way back to Dwayne Washington. They believe they have a very good one. You can see Smith right here is going to work his way down the field, just playing center fielder. He actually has the size to go up and battle a Calvin Johnson and is in better position to do so facing up. Probably should have come down with the ball. Now on the punt it is Harris. And waiting back. At his own 20, coming up to get it at 23 is Sheros. Slips a tackle. Still on his feet across the 40. Down the sideline. To the 30. To the 20. And Sheros will bring it the distance. A punt return for a touchdown of 77 yards. Two kickoff returns. Two punt returns for touchdowns in the last two weeks against the Detroit Lions. I tell you what, special teams coach Danny Crossman, that's one thing to be schemed and get to the outside, but right here, missed tackles. You missed that tackle there. Now things start to break down. Watch how many misses you got a chance there. There, there, he cuts a missed tackle there. One after the other. This is not scheme. This is not giving up to the outside. This is just fundamentals missing tackles. One after is good. Harvin, now Marcus Sherrill. 20 to 6, Minnesota. Airlines. Find our fares online only at Southwest.com. By Frost Brewed Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. By Borderlands 2, Mayhem Awaits Bring Friends. In stores now, rated M for Mature. And by Lowe's. Lowe's, never stop improving.
Boy, what a turn of events right out of the gate. Much like the opening kickoff, a kickoff return, 105 yards for Harvin. And now Sherrills returns a punt for a touchdown. And this one booted out of the end zone. That is seven plays in the last game and a half. Seven plays that have gone against the Detroit Lions for 60 or more yards and a touchdown. Well, this game has been, is now, and always will be about explosive plays and turnovers, the combination thereof. You tend to think of explosive plays as just on offense, but obviously in special teams as well. That's a deep hole to dig yourself out of when you're giving up those type of huge, huge plays. Not even two minutes to pass double. to begin this third quarter. Double, double. If we thought this crowd could be any more quiet than it was a short while ago, it is. And around, Titus Young Sr. at the 25-yard line. That'll be a gain of five on first down. That's the first punt return for a touchdown in quite a while for these Minnesota Vikings. Go back to Bernard Berrien in 2008. And that was the only one since Anthony Carter back in 1988. Swap, swap. Field and a first down on Burleson. That's a great catch by Burleson. He had to fire that in before he got into the safety. I want you to watch Burleson in the slot. He's got to fire this thing because obviously they're closing in on him. You can see Harrison Smith. What great hands. And that thing was coming high and hot. That wasn't a lofty pass. 26 yard gain and now the short. I'll pick up a four, and that'll take it to the Minnesota 45-yard line. For whatever reason, the Lions this season, through the first three quarters of a game, is they're in hurry-up mode now. They scored 44 points combined in four games. They scored five more than that in the fourth quarter alone in three games. Catch made by Calvin Johnson. He's a yard short of a first down, third and one. And that's a good news, bad news. The good news is you're scoring those kind of points. The bad news is you're having to score those kind of points. Here you can see at the top, Calvin Johnson, this is the kind of stuff they're going to give him. Let him push, come underneath. We'll rally up and make the tackle. We're not going to let you get deep. Where's the yard? I don't think he got it. Well, this would be, one would believe, perhaps out of the range for Jason Hansen on fourth down in a the yard. They're going to send out the punt team. Yeah, just off the edge. You can see Sanford coming off the edge, typically a deep DB coming off the edge. Can't get there quick enough on a third and one. That's why he's unblocked. But there seemed to be a hesitation uh, by the back and absolutely no push by the offensive line. Would you be punting here or going for it? Ah, boy, get the way this game's gone, you need to do something to get some energy. I'm not sure you don't go for it. Well, they're going to send out Harris to punt it. Try to play the field possession game and field position game. And that's caught at 10. It's been a lifeless outing so far for Jim Schwartz and East Lions. Special teams coordinator, been a rough day. For Mike Prefer, same job on the other side. Stick the chest out a little bit. Thanks to Marcus Sherrills and Percy Harvin. First down. First time we've called the name today of Kyle Rudolph, who had two touchdown receptions in the win over the 49ers last week. That's his first catch today. Fox Sports is so proud to partner with the Children's Organ Transplant Association during our NFL on Fox coverage. CODA is giving hope and making miracles for families whose children are facing transplants to help change a child's life, a family's life. Please visit CODA, that's C-O-T-A, org slash Fox Sports. Good first half for Adrian Peterson. And on first down, he carries up to the 24-yard line, and that'll move the chains. 
This is the kind of game Christian Ponder has been playing up until last week where he had, was responsible for the three touchdowns against San Francisco. Managed the game up obviously now by two touchdowns. This is just exactly what the Minnesota Vikings want out of Christian Ponder. Be very judicious about anything you put down the field. Carter steps up out of cut now being chased and lets it fly just before he was caught by Averill. That's the one thing about Ponder, that 23-yard touchdown run from last week. He is very gifted athletically. Been efficient, not a lot of yardage. But no turnovers, and he hasn't needed with two special team scores. Adrian Peterson, kind of a pedestrian game. But again, you don't need a whole bunch more. And Percy Harvin, big impact, obviously. Opening game with the kickoff return for a touchdown. Second down and ten. Ready. Stepping up, filling the hole, DeAndre Levy. Second leading tackler for the Lions. Drags down Peterson. Third down and long upcoming. This is a big play by DeAndre Levy. If he doesn't make this tackle, Adrian Peterson may be out the gate one-on-one -on -one with the safety. Look, head up, seeing what you hit, just the way you teach it in high school. Third and seven, they need to get out to the 34-yard line. Ponder, good protection this time. And Rudolph is wrapped up and dropped once more by Levy. Today's the first time in the history of the Minnesota Vikings franchise they have returned a kickoff and a punt for a touchdown in the same game. Whew, that's a long history. 1960, if I'm not mistaken, Minnesota Vikings. I spent nine years with the Vikings. Set all kinds of record under your uh, offensive leadership there. But obviously not those kind of records. <laughs> well, you, you didn't do the special teams, right? Well, I wasn't on that job. Louie booms it. Sending Logan all the way back to his own 21-yard line. And a good return by Logan. Still on his feet, tiptoes along the sideline. Lions are looking for something, anything, to give this team some life. It's 20-6, Minnesota. On Fox is sponsored by the new 2013 Ford F-150 with EcoBoost. line right here outside of Detroit, Michigan. So far, the home team Stafford trailing 20 to 6, but a long way to go. 802 to play in a third, and Stafford on first down after the big punt return by Logan being chased by Allen. With Antoine Winfield turned around, they tried to find Nate Burleson. It's incomplete. Again, just an example, Matthew Stafford wanted something big down the field. But up by two touchdowns, the Minnesota Vikings are going to be patient, sit in a very loose zone defense, give you anything else you want underneath. We're just not going to give you the big play down the field. Allen Williams, the defensive coordinator, understands what the priorities are, and right now it's just don't give up the big plays. Spent 10 years in Indianapolis. Now, first-year defensive coordinator under Leslie Frazier. He worked with Frazier in Indianapolis for a short time. And out of the backfield, first time today, we've coined the name of Troy Bell. Good coverage of every NFL game with NFL Mobile's free premium access this weekend. Call Star Star NFL to download NFL Mobile. And you just get the feeling, the momentum of this game, even though, as we mentioned, we're not even midway through, or right now midway through the third quarter. Every third down, Huge. getting more magnified when Detroit's on offense. If you're going to play this uh, tight game, here's Calvin Johnson. you got to be good on third down. Right now, the Lions only two of eight on third down. And this is a convertible third medium. Four-man rush. Stafford steps up. And dropped again. This time by Titus Young Sr. Lions lead the NFL and drops that is 12 of them and three big ones today. Let's check in with Patrick O'Neill. 
Todd, thanks very much. How about that Falcons offense versus the Panthers? Here's Michael Turner on a little flip screen from Matt Ryan. He's going to go 60 yards for the touchdown. His first career TD reception. Atlanta up 24 to 14. Tom and Brian. We were talking about that Atlanta Falcons team before the game today, Coach Billick. Mighty impressive. Well, they too have the balance that you're looking for. Offense, defense, running and passing. 6.56 to go in the third quarter. Minnesota in front, 20 to 6. It's a very frustrating day for Matthew Stafford in this Detroit offense. Stafford sacked a couple of times. Only two of nine on third down. Ponder on first down. Escapes one tackle and turns it into positive yardage. That'll be a five-yard pickup. Not a lot of quarterbacks can get out around the edge and run away from a defensive lineman, let alone a DB. Ponder, you should see the kind of speed he gets to the steps in and gets to the outside, strong enough to step out of the tackle. And this guy's got legitimate speed, shocking speed. You don't realize he's that fast until you get him on the field. Second down and five, they give it to Peterson. Coming up to make the stop is Tullock. Story of this one, a big story anyway. Special teams, beginning with the opening kickoff. Percy Harvin for the fifth time in his career. Returns a kickoff for a touchdown. And then the first time the Viking touched the ball here in the second half, Marcus Sherrill's 77-yard punt return for a touchdown. 53 yards more in special teams yardage and the Vikings have on offense. Third down. Ponder, did he get it back to the line of scrimmage? He had a receiver though. Your favorite who has been very quiet Jerome this Simpson. year. Simpson. He had Jerome. People are wanting because we see that all the time is that again right here you're going to see the pressure he's still within the tackle box so he has to have someone to get the ball to Jerome Simpson you're going to see was clearly within distance that's who he was aiming for otherwise otherwise if he gets outside the tackle box he can just throw the ball away as long as it passes the line of scrimmage it did not there but Simpson clearly was the receiver no penalty so Corey Williams who went out with knee surgery a week ago celebrating that defensive stand and now very good field position here for the Lions, starting from their own 43. Five thirty-eight to play in the third quarter. Lashore in his NFL debut, rushed 26 times for 100 yards last week in Tennessee. A dramatically different story so far today. And this one will only get him a yard, maybe a yard and a half. Well, some of the headlines around the National Football League, the early games. I mean, San Diego, after just getting hammered by Atlanta last week, doing the same now to Kansas City. Texans up by 14. A seven-point game now, Buffalo in front of New England. And the 49ers, after losing to these Vikings last week, on the road in New York, pitching a shutout, 10-0 in front of the Jets. Stafford threw behind the intended target. but like Johnson lost his footing. Third down and eight. Chad Greenway, this front seven of the Minnesota Vikings, is stuffing the run with just a standard seven-man box. They're getting pressure on the quarterback with just a four-man rush. That's a tough dial-up for the Detroit Lions trying to find something to crack this puzzle to get the ball down the field to get any kind of continuity. Calvin Johnson, again, how do you find a way to get to this guy, particularly in an, here again, a third down situation. Two of nine by the Detroit Lions at this point. This time Pettigrew hangs on and that is a first down to the Minnesota 45. And they're now into a, a no huddle trying to increase the pace not because of the time but just the energy just trying to find something to break down this passive defense of the Minnesota Vikings see if they can find something to get some rhythm 
Rochelle, his first big carry of the afternoon, and the ball is loose. Still on the ground, and it looks like Sanford is on top of it. So the first big carry and run of the day for LaShore, he puts it on the ground. And a huge turnover all the way down at the Minnesota 29-yard line. Great run. Beats the interior seven of the defense. Got a cover-up. Great hit coming in by Jamarcus Sanford. And then he covered the ball up. He caused the fumble and recovered the fumble. Ball got kind of smacked up to him. That's a gift from above when you can cause the fumble. Be scrambling around and all of a sudden when someone either kicks it or swats it, swats it to you right there. Where Sanford is in there because of the injury, the ankle injury last week to Miss Call Raymond. Sanford much maligned last year. He got 15 starts. But he feels like, and he felt like coming into this game, that he deserves to be a starter in the NFL. And clearly this entire Minnesota secondary has played well here today. And with Harrison Smith, a rookie in the back end, as you said, Mistrell Raven, second-year player. So actually Stanford, a fourth-year player, gives them a little experience in that back end in the important position of safety. Minnesota Vikings are going to have a shot to get down the field because Detroit keeps building this box. You can see it right here, trying to stuff the run and create a turnover. And breaking through that line is Peterson and did that extra effort get him a first down. Ricardo Silva had him wrapped up. Watch the acceleration right here. He just gets downfield right when he sees that hole right here. And now he's ready to make it that eye. He goes, where's the hole? You can see right now he's sizing up. Where am I going to go? Who am I going to have to take on? Look at that side cut to cut right there. Those knees are feeling good right now. Squeezing, as you said, Tom, that extra yard or two out that gives them a first down. Three minutes to play in the third quarter. And Minnesota on the first down. We'll hand it to Peterson. And he's dropped for a loss of a yard. Great to have you with us on this Sunday afternoon alongside Mr. Billick and Laura Oakman, Tom Brenneman, our entire Fox crew from Ford Field in downtown Detroit, Michigan. The Minnesota Vikings won three games all of last season. They are going for their third win in the first four weeks of this season in front of Gunther Cunningham's Detroit Lions. 20 to 6. Peterson, another big run and another first down. Crosses midfield all the way to the Detroit 45-yard line. And now Peterson beginning to bang on that door of a 100-yard rushing day. Well, this is taking nothing away from the Minnesota Vikings because they're doing a great job up front. But these are missed tackles. You see one there. You see one there. Another opportunity. Hand on the hip. Can't convert it. Minnesota Vikings doing a beautiful job blocking. But right now it's the missed tackles of the Detroit Lions that are costing them. Well, both sides pointing at one another. And everybody's wondering what who pointing one Mitchell another. Neutral zone infraction. Defense number 84. The player entered the neutral zone, causing the tackle to respond. Five-yard penalty, still first down. And this right here, this gamesmanship of the uh, gamesmanship of the offensive and defensive line. Clearly, number 94, Lawrence Jackson, jumping off sides. This offensive line of the Minnesota Vikings is a big physical line. Right now, they're kind of manhandling the front of the Detroit Lions, not only in the running game, but they're doing a nice job not allowing Averill and Vandenbosch to get pressure on the quarterback. They're winning the battle up front. There's no question about it right now. They made a lot of changes in this Minnesota offensive line from a season ago. They had Steve Hutchinson and Anthony Herrera as their guards. They moved Charlie Johnson from the left tackle spot to left guard when they drafted 
Matt Khalil, the first round out of USC. The only carryovers from the line a year ago, the center John Sullivan and their right tackle Phil Lodeholt. They put in Brandon Fusco, a first-year starter at right guard. They felt like not only were they stronger, but they were much more athletic. That's what they told us. You may remember going back to before that Indianapolis game. And right now, this is tough duty for this offensive line because the Detroit Lions are bringing the extra people down into this box virtually on every play, at least every first and second medium because they know the Minnesota Vikings are committed to running the ball. Peterson very close to another first down. He needed to get to the 36 yard line and he's very close to it. Peterson now 15 carries. And up to 92 yards rushing. They'll probably let this come down to the quarter, make a more orchestrated call. And the spot of the ball right now appears to be about a foot short of the first half. End of the third quarter. A stunner in the making. Minnesota leading Detroit on the road. Fox NFL Sunday continues after a break from your local station. A few moments ago, it was LaShore who put the ball on the carpet here at Ford Field at the Minnesota 30-yard line. There's that offensive line we were talking about and all the changes they made going back to last season. And this group has played quite well. And so far, Adrian Peterson has rushed for 92 yards. This for a first down, and he'll get it and then some. Broke a tackle of Steven Tullock, and there's been a lot of that for Peterson today. Again, you can just see how many tackles he runs through, how strong he is on a short third and one. That's a lot of bodies, a lot of arms. Losing his shoe here, that's about the only thing that's going to stop Adrian Peterson. Let's pull a shoot off. Hey, just stepping out of one right now. They've got him stopped on this third down. He's got a guy a hold of his legs. He runs through another arm tackle. Guys on the ground, still driving. Cliff Averill Brown. jumping on top, trying to stop him. That is power and athleticism. Gerhardt replacing Peterson and strong running for Toby Gerhardt down to the 28-yard line. And we go to Los Angeles and check in with Kurt Menefee. Hi, Kurt. Hey, Tom. Last week, of course, the Vikings upset the Niners. San Fran bouncing back at the Jets. Fourth and one, Frank Gore, two yards scored. They lead it 17-0, ending the third quarter. Tom and Brian. And what the Vikings are doing to the Jets validates how impressive that win was last week for Minnesota at home against that very same San Francisco 49er team. 72 of the 97 yards coming after contact was made on Peterson. He's still standing on the sideline and Ponder taking the run. Incomplete looking for Rudolph. And Cliff Averill is shaken up down on the play. You can see Averill coming off the edge right here. We'll have to see. Sees the boot action. So now he tries to react right there to Christian Ponder. And the left leg just bundles underneath him. Well, you hope this is nothing serious for Averill. By Bud Light, the official beer of NFL fans. Here we go. And by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Cliff Averill limping off the field. Good to see he's up and walking, but we'll hope for the best. Averill has such a monster year last year. Career high 11 sacks for six fumbles. Third down. Ponder rolling, looking, throwing, incomplete. Brandon Bosch knocking Ponder to the deck, but picks him right back up. Watch Kyle Vandenbosch run this thing down. We talked about the athleticism and the speed of Christian Ponder. Vandenbosch taking the right angle, forcing the errant throw by Ponder. Shows you the athleticism 
that Kyle Vandenbosch has. Without Avery on the other side, that really severely limits the Detroit Lions in terms of that rush end off either side. 46 yard try by Walsh, and for the first time in his NFL career, he misses a field goal attempt. NFL game. He's been a hero a couple of times already, but a miss for Blair Walsh. That's all part of the, the growth of a young kicker like that. Fortunately, it's not in a situation where it will cost his team, at least right now, doesn't look like it's going to cost his team too much. All right, first down for Stafford and the Lions. Down by 14. The screen to LaShore. He fumbled the last time he had the ball. What a, a number of miscues today by this Lions offense. Alvin Johnson had a jarred loose. Had a on the next play, dropped a short touchdown. Burleson couldn't hang on. Same held true for Titus Young Sr. And the fumble by LaShore. And the Lions were all the way down to the Minnesota 30-yard line, their last drive. A Viking shaken up on the field. Number 98, LaTroy Guyon, able to get back up and walk off the field. And that's the trouble with the, the miscues you're talking about, Tom. Every one of them was somebody else. And each one can finish the game go, well, it was only one. But it's five different guys. All of a sudden, that's five different miscues. That'll kill an offense. Yet no one individual can you say, well, this guy killed us. That's tough. All the offense in that wild one in overtime in Tennessee. Told you the Lions came in the number one passing offense in the NFL so far through the first three weeks. Number two overall in offense. And that one batted down at the line of scrimmage by big Fred Evans. Let's quickly send it to Los Angeles. Well, San Francisco dominating the Jets right now, and it gets even worse after Santonio Holmes goes down with an apparent left knee injury, fumbles the football. Carlos Rogers scoops it up and takes it 51 yards for the score. It is 24-0. Jets being embarrassed in the Meadowlands. Tom and Brian. Got to look at the block. The batted pass there by Evans. So now third down and five. Crossing route. Catch made by Burleson. First down up to the 47-yard line. Still a long way to go in this one. 20 Yeah, but they need to get something with this drive to chip away at that two-touchdown lead. This is the best scoring position they've been in for a while. They've got to, at the very least, come away with three points on this drive with just at 12 minutes left in the game. A little bit too high for Calvin Johnson. And a flag down. Johnson is down. Just that deep in route that we've seen so many times from Calvin Johnson. Boy, no, that's Chad Greenway knows right now. That was the shoulder pad to helmet, defenseless. This defines the defenseless receiver. Head to head, and he launched himself. At the last Personal minute, he foul. realized what he did. Ruffles, defense, number 52. This is the helmet of a defenseless player. Penalty is 15 yards and an automatic first down. It was that last little launch that brought the head to head. That's also, unfortunately, going to bring a fine as well. That'll bring a big fine. He's got time to pull off this right here, and it's that launch with the head and the shoulder to the head that the league is trying to do away with. League not fooling around, finding players for helmet-to-helmet -helmet contact. Stephen Tullock last week fined $21,000 on a helmet-to-helmet -helmet hit in Tennessee. So the ball is moved to the 38-yard line. Watch his guys. And Stafford working out a shotgun four-man rush. That's made by Pettigrew. Goes to another first down to the Minnesota 28. It is a first down. And they continue with the no huddle. They seem to feel like that's going to give them the best chance. Again, not necessarily to catch Minnesota's defense off guard because they're running the same thing the whole game, but to just increase the energy of the offense and the tempo. 
Swings it across the middle to LaShore, and he's set out of bounds. Another first down to the 12-yard line. Nice little sidearm by Matthew Stafford again. I think he's as good as anybody in the league. Kind of like he's rolling dice. Came up whatever it is in dice that's good. I don't even know. Snake eyes or double it, whatever, whatever it is. I'm not a dice player. Well, if you're playing craps, you don't want to see seven. Okay. Well, right. that, that wasn't a seven. No. Joy Bell inside the 10 down to the nine yard line and we talked about it earlier for whatever reason the story of this Lions team on offense has been to come alive in the fourth quarter here we are just under 11 minutes to go in the fourth quarter their offense coming alive yeah I'd look for Scheffler and Pettigrew down into here that's where they come real big in the red zone Stafford playing with an injured hip Keeps it himself and picks up a couple of yards. He's down to the seven yard line, wrapped up by Robinson. Detroit's got to hold on to the idea that one score here makes it a one score game. Wow, good hit there. At that point, he's not a defenseless quarterback. He's trying to get yardage, so there's nothing wrong with hitting the quarterback there. Well, it's the third down, and when you're down 14 points with 10 minutes, I don't think a field goal is going to cut it right now. Jared Allen cramping up. It looks like over on the sideline. I think you're right, Tom. I think this is four down territory where we are in the game right now. A shovel pass and nearly intercepted. Nearly a disaster for Stafford. All right, fourth down. And Jim Schwartz is going to leave his offense on the field. Right here you can see the desperation of a Stafford right there throwing something like that out there just hoping something can happen right here. Right here at fourth and five again you come back to your tight ends. They're bunching it up like so many people do. Trying to create some picks on the inside right here. That's Stafford and Pettigrew. And of course Calvin Johnson is still standing on the sideline after getting hit. And hit is Stafford. With Jared Allen standing on the sideline, Emerson Griffin takes his spot and comes up with a sack. Still just under 10 minutes, but the Lions in a world of trouble. Ready here. Well, they're checking out Calvin Johnson going through a, a number of tests. To see where he is after taking that helmet to helmet hit by Chad Greenway, who was not on the field in that fourth down play. And on the first down, they come out throwing the football. Caught by Adrian Peterson. Well, let's go back. You're without Jared Allen, so what do you do? I'm going to bring five guys where you only got four to block them. You're a man short on the edge. Matthew Stafford had no idea that he was a man short, brought about the sack. By Everson Griffin. And the only reason Griffin was in the game was because Jared Allen was standing or sitting more accurately over on the sideline, suffering from a cramp. Maybe that you know when it's your day. <laughs> right, you take your best defender out and you get a sack. He's just upset he wasn't in there to get that sack. Peterson has just gone over the 100 yard rushing mark today. Eight and a half months removed from total reconstructive surgery after tearing the ACL week 15 against Washington last year. Many wondered where would he be when he came back. He said all along I'll be ready for the season opener. Didn't play at all in the preseason. Looked very good in the first week that win. Wild win in overtime over Jacksonville and now a 100 yard rushing game. I was in Minneapolis during the week and people there will tell you they've come to the point whatever Adrian Peterson tells them they believe it doesn't matter. He said he would be back and once again he was true to his word. Wrapped up by Dominican Sue that'll be a loss of a yard. He's averaged over six yards a carry today. Maybe it's those shin guards. I'm going to start wearing those in the booth. Look at the power of this guy. There are the jump cuts we talk about. 
the patented Adrian Peterson cuts. Look at the power, the push, and it bouncing off, guys. And whether it's a team missing tackles or not, Adrian Peterson makes you miss tackles. And as we've said, this offensive line in the Minnesota Vikings has mauled the Detroit Lions front seven all day. Peterson wrapped up right at the line of scrimmage by Levy, and we check in once more with Kurt Menefee in Los Angeles. Well, Buffalo led New England 21-7 in the third quarter, but the Patriots have scored touchdowns on three straight possessions, and just like that, they're on top. 28-21 as they start the fourth quarter. Tom and Brian. Well, you can see in New England, they don't get the ball to a guy up for a long time. Gronk, he didn't get but a couple passes. Now he's going to get the passes. Wes Welker didn't get it two weeks before. He got it the next week. They're going to find him somehow. Third down, Ponder. The safe throw to Gerhardt, and he wraps that ball up with two hands. Up to the 35, and Minnesota will punt it away. And won't punt it until there's less than six minutes and 20 seconds left on the game clock. Minnesota's playing the four-minute offense to the hill. All that is, when you hear someone talk about four-minute offense, it's the idea of running the ball, secure the edges, don't take uh, undue hits on your quarterback, don't take unnecessary chances down the field. It's all about draining down the clock. Not until Detroit can show that they can do something offensively will Minnesota come out of that mentality. Short punt, very short punt. And Logan lets it bounce. It makes a left turn, and it'll be down to the 25-yard line. Still time after what we saw last week from Detroit. Calvin Johnson back on the field for the Lions. Jared Allen back on the field for the Vikings. It's going to take more than a cramp to keep Jared Allen out. This is sack time for a defensive end. They know that Detroit's got to throw the ball virtually every play. He wants his sacks. He may wear very well get one. Out of one already in a game today. And Stafford just having to throw it away. What is it today, Coach Billick, that at least with 6.02 left to play in the game? This is one of the most electrifying offenses, especially in the passing game, in the NFL over the last year and a half. What has happened today? Well, they just, we've said it many times, they haven't gotten those big plays down the field. And that's a hallmark of any passing team. It's the fact that you can get those explosive plays. And they have not, I can't think of a single play over 20 yards other than the penalty that they've got. It's this type of stuff right here. It's all they're going to give you. Keep it back, back up. Let him throw underneath. We'll rally up and make the tackle. And as poorly as Detroit has been on third down, they're 4 of 12 right now. Uh, that's a good formula to stay with, particularly up by two scores. Third down and six. Stafford to Johnson, and it's broken up, and a flag comes in. Antoine Winfield. You can read his lips. He's saying, I was within five, meaning five yards in a line of scrimmage. And you know what? He's got a legitimate point. Pass interference. Defense, number 26. The ball he plays to the spot of foul. You can see Automatic right here in the down. slot, he's getting a good chance. Look at the mismatch there in the size. you got to let him go at one point. Once he gets past you right there, you can put your hands on the receiver, but you can't change his impetus. He's got too much of a hold on him. That's actually a pretty good play. Like I said, you see that offhand right on the receiver several times during the course of the game, as long as this changed the progress of the receiver. Stafford will slide wisely so over the 42-yard line, and Greenway coming in there again, making sure. Again, he's looking downfield, got no place to go. The secondary of the Minnesota Vikings doing a nice job of just keeping everything in front of them. Closing in the five-minute mark. That'll be a first-down catch out of the backfield by Joyt Bell. Good running by Bell. Out of Wayne State, nearby Wayne State. Cut four times since he left as the Warriors' all-time leading rusher. Played for five teams. Only once had made an opening roster. 
For an NFL team, that was last year with New Orleans. He got hurt and they cut him. Look how deep these guys are. This is what I keep referring to. They're 20, 20 yards deep, keeping every. They're going to give the Detroit Lions all this they want because the time is closing in on them. They're going to rally up. So far, Detroit hasn't shown the ability to get it into the end zone. They've played this way the whole game. Right here, you can see right here. Look how deep these guys are. Sanford and Harrison. Smith, the rookie. Ryan Boyles, rookie out of Oklahoma, off his fingertips. He's still trying to recover from ACL surgery last year. And that's tough for a quarterback to know that you, you don't want to. To get the ball turned over. You don't want to force it into coverage, but you know you've got to make bigger plays down the field. He's shown good patience, but we're past the time. It's like the old joke with the buzzards in the tree. You know, the heck with patience. I'm going to go kill something. Okay? <laughs> I got to put something down the field. Well, Samito batted into the air and incomplete. Antoine Winfield once more got a hand on it. Man, is he something. 35 years old in his 14th season out of Ohio State. Finally taking a shot down the field. Winfield bounces it up in the air. Nothing's going right for the Lions. Get a jump ball here with Sheffield in behind it. Ball, but he's wide open. The key there is how can you get you tip it just right. That Winfield is some kind of player, boy. His goal coming into the NFL was to make it 10 years in the league. He made his first Pro Bowl in his 10th season in the league. He's tacked on two more sits. Bell once more breaks a tackle and Jordan Bell to the seven yard line. Lions need to hurry it up here. We're under four minutes to go. A touchdown quickly and you've got a shot with an onside kick. You might even see them trying to slip in a trap here at some point. They've got the down to do it with this passive coverage of the Minnesota Vikings maybe can sneak it in takes it throws it away block stops 321 Stafford after getting knocked to the deck by Allen pops back up well, unlike last time deep offensive coordinator Scott Lanahan has all his weapons in there he's got Calvin Johnson He's got Pettigrew. He's got Sheffield, the two big tight ends. He's got all the big bodies he needs to get something into the end zone. Good man, Calvin Johnson, down here. Inside the one by Nate Burleson, so more clock continues to run. Yeah, knees were down when he caught it, and there was contact by Greenway. Looks like it was a good call. Outstretched over the top, and a touchdown by Stafford. So this baby is not over. 2.56 left. Nice job. He knows all he's got to do is break the plane. Great. Oh boy, I don't know. All you have to do is break the plane. This will be reviewed from up above because this is a scoring play. I don't know that he broke the plane there. Ah boy. All you got to do is touch that goal line. Of course, they're uh, going to look at it. They do on every scoring play. It doesn't have to be challenged. Every scoring play in the NFL beginning last year is looked at. Previous play is under review. We're going to take a look. Looks like he pulled that baby maybe right off the rim. For angle, we're not exactly right on the goal line. After review of the play, the ruling on the field stands. It is a touchdown. 11 plays, 75 yards for 3 minutes and 12 seconds. And now a point after away from making it a 7-point game. 
Detroit has all three of its timeouts. We're at 256. They're going to get the two minute warning. So the question is do we go the onside or do we think we can play good defense. Get the ball back and with all the skill position players we have move it back down the field for a score. Point after is good. All right, well, Coach Billick, you're standing here on the sideline. As you look at a touchdown lunge by Stafford. You know, if you're the head coach, I'm not asking you what would you do now because, you know, every situation's different. Maybe the, the input you're getting from the sideline. But would this be strictly your call at this point in time? Or would you be turning maybe to somebody, I don't know, special teams coordinator, defensive coordinator, and saying, what do you think here? Well, it's hard to do that because what special teams coordinator is not going to say, yes, we can get the onside? What defensive coordinator is going to say, no, coach, I don't think we can hold them? Right. But I think offensively, you have to look, do you really think after taking the chance, if you want to play defense, can you go the length of the field and score? They've done it only one time the whole game. I'm not sure right now the odds aren't best in your favor to try the onside kick and shorten the field because I've not seen enough of my offense to think I can go the length of the field, even though I've got a very talented group of skill players. Well, we're about to find out because uh, Jim Schwartz clearly has made that decision. It was quick. I mean, they had their guys over there on the sideline, talked about exactly what they wanted it to do. Minnesota has. All oh, but Percy Harvin up within 10 yards. They're configured for an onside kick regardless of what happens. Four times in 28 tries. Hanson has converted an onside kick and they're just going to kick it away. Harvin will let it go back into the end zone. And pick it up. Take a knee. Last week, I mean, you talk about a wild finish after Stafford got hurt. Sean Hill went two touchdown scoring drives, including that Hail Mary. That was in 18 seconds, the final 18 of regulation to force overtime. But now all eyes on the Detroit defense. Peterson is rushed for 103 yards. And you gotta believe he's getting the football. Well, if they play their cards right here, they can get the ball. With still two minutes to play on the clock. With 56 seconds, three timeouts, and the two-minute warning. Jim Schwartz can utilize his timeouts and make this a very short clock for the Minnesota Vikings, leaving his team hopefully field position and enough time to go the length of the field. All right, first down, Kerry is back to the line of scrimmage. On Saturday, we'll have our first doubleheader of the season. Fox College Saturday, the pregame show, a Pac-12 showdown. Arizona takes on Stanford. And then how about Geno Smith of West Virginia? Threw for eight touchdowns yesterday. He had six incompletions. The eighth-ranked Mountaineers take on Texas. Saturday, 2.30 Eastern, 11.30 Pacific. A lot of points in that game. We lost the game 60 to 58 one year, and my head coach said, you know what? I'd have thought 58 points was enough. <laughs> Not sure what the uh, officials might be talking over here. They may just be checking to make sure how many timeouts they've got left. Detroit down to two now. Clock operator, please put two minutes and 53 seconds on the game clock. I was just getting ready to say, Coach Billick, the snap of that ball was at 2.56. One second went off the, the clock we see here in the stadium. The officials obviously keep the clock on the field. So three seconds elapse rather than one. Will that make a difference? How about the call and how about the catch by Jerome Simpson? Bill Musgrave, the Minnesota offensive coordinator, stuns everybody with this call. Well, he's utilizing that height. Beautiful catch. 
Dwight Bentley one on one with Simpson. Remember last time we did this it was a pass interference call. Musgrave figuring two of the two of those things are good. It's incomplete. It's a penalty or I get a completion. Nice bold call by Bill Musgrave the offensive coordinator. That changes the whole dynamic here now because now you only have one timeout left for Detroit. That means Minnesota can run off a whole bunch of clock, take it down into the two minute warning, suck a little more clock after it. Even if they don't get another first down, that was a huge, huge play. Simpson had three catches, but they've thrown the ball down the field to him five times today. Twice they've gotten pass interference calls. And Peterson. Might have a lot of scrimmage by Willie Young. And will the Lions use their final timeout here? Now he'll wait one more. This is going to take a third his... down call. Yeah, they're going to get a they're going to get a two minute warning break here. There's a they're going to have to snap a play before the two minute warning. Minnesota will. That's why Lions electing. I guess not to take the timeout right now. Right, because then they can use their timeout after the third down play. This is not a bad use of the clock, even though that's a lot of time running off. Sucking down, and Ponder's going to throw it. Rolling. And just throws it away. So 158. Minnesota trying to win a division game. Since 2010. before the Lions use their final timeout. This good use of the timeout and the clock on both teams. Jim Schwartz knowing that he held that one timeout for third down. Nice job on the other side. Normally you wouldn't want to throw a pass on second down but they knew the two minute warning was going to stop the clock anyway even if it was an incomplete pass. So both coaches utilizing the clock to the optimum. Now Jim Schwartz is hopefully giving his team an opportunity. They're sitting there with no timeouts and under two minutes to see if they can go the length of the field. Conceivably if they hold on to this punt. Both Minnesota touchdowns have come on special teams. That man Marcus Sherrills, a punt return touchdown. And the opening kickoff returned 105 yards by Percy Harvin. Now are they coming after Cluey? No, they're not. High inside the 10. And how about that? Wow. You can't do it any better than that. Beautifully placed ball. Great coverage. Detroit opting for the return, not putting pressure on Cluey. They gave him plenty of time to darn near hit the roof of this dome stadium and placing the ball on the two yard line. This defines you want a challenge you sit in the backyard dreaming about bringing your team back in two minutes. I don't know that you put it on the two yard line even in your best fantasy dream. You usually OK maybe the 10. But I don't know that you're going to I'm going to put myself 98 yards away from the tying score. Well that is the situation facing staff. First down minute 42 to go. Lions out of timeout. Pettigrew up to the nine. Clock will continue to run. You talk about these safeties being backed up all day long. They're backed up darn near to Flint right now. They're not going to let anything get in behind them. Snap in a minute 21. Stafford again. Underneath. LaShore. Bell, I beg your pardon, up to the 21 yard line. Minute 10 left. The Lions started last season 5 and 0. 
Now they're looking for a big chunk, and it's incomplete. Should the Lions lose this game, and there's 54 seconds left, since the 5-0 start of last year energizes franchise, this would be their 10th loss in their last 16 games if you include the playoffs. So that is a full season, 6-10, and 10, since the 5-0 and start. And you remember how far this organization, this team, this city has come in terms of the Lions, but it's hard not to let some of those thoughts, those negative thoughts start to creep in as your fortunes turn a little bit. Stafford down the middle of the field and through the hands of Johnson. Not sure if he ever saw it or whether he got blocked by the defender. These throws by Stafford, like I said a couple times, they've been high and hot. They need a little bit more loft to try to drop it in behind the linebackers and in front of these deep, deep safeties. Well, look at Winfield again. What a player. Always has been. And as I said in the open, at 5'9", maybe one of the, if not the most physical DB in the league. 49 ticks remain, third down. Through the hands of Johnson this time. That looked like a pass that should have been caught. Yeah, it's just that, you know, Calvin Johnson is, is among, if not the best receiver in the league. Your team needs you. He wants to catch that ball, obviously. A little bit high, but those are the kind of catches you've got to make, particularly in these situations, just to give you, to your team a chance. Well, this is it. Fourth down. 44 seconds left. They need to get to the 32-yard line. Calvin Johnson, where else do you go? Throwing underneath and letting him run. May not get it done. Stafford throws, and it's Johnson for a first down to the 40. And again, they're trying to get to the line of scrimmage. We're down to 35 and running. They had a Hail Mary at the buzzer last week in Tennessee. Waiting for that football to be placed. And a quick spike. 23 seconds remain. Well, this is the soft area of this prevent defense right here from the hash to the numbers. The safeties are 25 and 30 yards deep. You've got a nickel or a linebacker standing almost in the middle field like a three deep safety. So from the hash to the numbers, that's the soft, that is the soft area in the zone. And here again, we're too far out for this Hail Mary. But it doesn't mean we don't get in position to try this. We still have 23 seconds on the clock. Stafford. Fumbles the ball. And is it recovered by the Vikings? Is it a fumble? Or are they saying Stafford is down at the 40-yard line? The officials are already meeting at the 42. One official where the ball was recovered is signaling Minnesota ball. He was, he had contact and went the down. Field, a fumble and Minnesota recovered. Yeah, the ball started to come out. Inside of two minutes, that will likely be replay, uh, replayed, instant replay. Right here, we can't see when did the ball start to come out. Looked like he still had control as his the previous play is under review. Hit the ground. We'll see here. Does it come out? Still don't have a shot there. We're going to have to change the possessions. They automatically review it. This is not being challenged because the Lions are out of timeout. One on question is, was he down before the ball came out? Minnesota actually is hurt more with this. They'd be in the bed better off if they had not ruled it a fumble because the clock would have continued. This was a first down play. The review inside of two minutes and a change of possession. We'll bring Mike Pereira in. Mike, a lot of things going on here, especially at this point in the game. How do you see it? A lot of things to take a look at here. Did the rear end touch before the ball came loose? And remember, if it does, too, then it's a quarterback sack clock would keep on going inside of, uh, or no, actually, it was, not, it was not a sack. So, you know, this is just a, uh, a real tough play. They just got to look at, is it coming loose? Uh, here's the uh, verdict. Cleet Blakeman, our referee. After reviewing the play, the quarterback was down by contact with the ball 
at the 37-yard line. There was 19 seconds left on the game clock when that happened. This, because we went from a stop clock to a running clock, it's going to require a 10-second runoff. So the clock operator, please put nine seconds on the game clock. And it'll be, it'll be third down at the 37-yard line, and the clock will start on my ready. So this is it. They're going to get one final play, or maybe a completion to set up a Hail Mary. So nine seconds. Not over yet. And stranger things have happened. Stafford throws, catch made, had a groove, bumped out of bounds. Five seconds left from their own 44-yard line. Well, here's a Hail Mary for a second straight week. Could they do it again? The tough thing for Stafford, can he hold on to it long enough? Remember how much Sean Hill had to move around? eventually get outside the body of the pocket because this is a long long throw now so this is going to take a while to develop Matthew Stafford those defensive ends of the Minnesota Vikings want to stay upfield and not let him outside because this is where he buys some time and that's going to do it Emerson Griffin and Jared Allen sacked Stafford to end the game and for the first time since his same venue on September the 26th in 2010, the Minnesota Vikings have won a game in the NFC North. Congratulations to Leslie Frazier and the Vikings, who are now 3-1. and one. Let's go to the AT&T Game Break Show. Here's Kurt Menefee in the Fox Network Center. What a win.